Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Uh, today, well, yesterday I gave a uh, hour presentation on a bunch of uh, free ham radio software that I use here in the ham shack. I'm going to try to do an abbreviated version of that one hour. I'm going to go as fast as I possibly can and describe some of this software to you that I'm using. Uh, virtually all of it is free and available on the internet. Uh, all you have to do is download it, install it, figure out how to use it, and start using it. I will put links uh, down in the comments so you can uh, go directly to the websites for each of these uh, free software, ham radio software packages. So without further ado, I'm going to go as fast as I possibly can. Let me put my eyes back on and we'll get you over to the other screen. I did one of these back uh, several months ago, months and months, maybe a year ago. And I wasn't happy with the resolutions uh, that it turned out to be, so I'm going to do another one. So here we go with free amateur radio software. So let's start right up here in the top with Ham Clock. Ham Clock. <clears throat> As you know, if you're an amateur radio operator, you need to be able to know what the UTC time is. So we can open up this ham clock and it puts a little clock on the screen. You can set these for uh, your local time in one side and your UTC time in the other. Uh, <clears throat> that's the way I've got this set. And there's a couple of other combinations and colors that you can pick from. Anyway, this one's called ham clock. Now remember, I'm going to go kind of fast here, so... Uh, just trying to show you what I use. All right, so the next one is called ADIF Master. ADIF Master, here it is. And what it is, uh, if you have an ADI file on your computer and you know there's some errors in it, uh, you can just open it with this software by going File Open and pointing to the ADI file. And then you can go into this uh, spreadsheet that it generates once you do that and correct any errors and save it back. And then you can upload it to various sites with any errors already corrected. So this one's called ADIF Master. And the next one is AirLink Express. I use this specifically for doing radio teletype. Uh, you get a screen like this. Now, why do I use this? FL Digi also does uh, RTTY, radio teletype. <clears throat> but you have to tune the signal. Well, with this one, uh, you can come up here and select a really normal or really inverted. That's really all I use it for, one of the, these two. Okay, you select that, and then all you have to do is uh, tune in some uh, ready signals until you get the proper waterfall on this screen. And all you have to do is place this blue marker right here on the center of that waterfall uh, signal. And it'll begin decoding RIDI. So it's real easy to tune RIDI. Do it visually. And that's why I like it. That's called AirLink Express. Now there's a few software programs up here that have nothing to do with ham radio, so I'm going to skip them. Uh, the next one, I'm going to skip this one, nothing to do with ham radio. Or it's something very specific to my flex radio, so I'll skip it. So if you see me skipping some, I didn't miss it. It's I'm doing it on purpose. Uh, the next one is called Chirp, C-H-I-R-P. And uh, this is a great little free software package if you have uh, any handy talkies that you need to program program up using the computer. 
And uh, what throws people is this screen right here that comes up. It's totally blank. And uh, of course, a lot of people don't know what to do next. Well, assuming your radio is connected, you come up here to radio and you click download from radio. That's your first step. And uh, once it down, downloads from the radio, uh, you'll have a screen here that you can use to program the radio. Now, I know what you're saying. There's nothing on the brand new radio. It, uh, it basically is empty. So why would you do that? Well, wh when you do that, the first thing it does is check the file format for that radio determines what it is, and then it sets up this page uh, right here to match that file format. Uh, once you get the page, you just start entering your frequencies and PL tones and narrow or wide or whatever the column says. Then you save it to your computer, and at that moment, under radio, this upload to radio will be, won't be grayed out. It'll be uh, where you can click it. And you just upload that to the radio. So now you've got a copy on your computer and a copy on your radio. And this particular piece of software, gosh, does dozens and dozens of different brands of handy talkies. So go out there and get the daily download off the Chirp file uh, website. Get the daily download. That'll be the latest version and install it on your computer. And I'm skipping around. <clears throat> okay, the next one I come to is called Digital Master. It's actually a part of Ham Radio Deluxe. Uh, the only thing I use Ham Radio Deluxe for, it does a lot of things like controlling your radio, it does the digital modes, bunches of them, is uh, I'll use it for some of the digital modes from time to time. So I extracted the execute file as a shortcut out of this software right here, Ham Radio Deluxe, and just put it up so I can just get into there real fast. Uh, without actually opening Ham Radio Deluxe and then going and finding uh, Digital Master. Uh, anyway, uh, the only thing I actually use Ham Radio Deluxe for now is I work a few digital modes with it from time to time and or I will use the log function in Ham Radio Deluxe to save my contact log, logs onto uh, this computer. Uh, if you watch some of my prior videos, you know that I download the original up-to-date ADI file directly from EQSL. And, uh, I basically import it into uh, Ham Radio Deluxe. This is the free version, by the way. I'll talk about that in a minute. The next one is called D-Rats, D-Rats, and what this will do for you, if you happen to have a D-Star radio, is uh, D-Star radios have a digital channel uh, and a voice channel, so uh, operating simultaneously. So you can come in here with D-Rats, and then when you're talking to somebody on the radio, uh, you can send that person a message <clears throat> across the radio transmission that they will receive in DRATS. So it's like a, uh, you can send little small computer files, but they can't be very big, but you could send some kind of small text document or something like that using DRATS. <clears throat> what it's used for in some places is the uh, MCOM people, the emergency management people, will use this with D-Star radios to send and receive incident reports 
casualty reports, damage reports, and those kind of things uh, using a D-Star radio. So take a look at D-RATS if you have a D-Star radio. DB Tool is a special program, and I'm going to have to get you back on my face right here. Let me, let me do that. Let me switch you back over here real quick. And go in the drawer right here. And uh, I hope I did something. What, what did I do with it? Where did I put it? Well, I got to go look and see what I did with it. I don't remember what I did with it. But I own a DV dongle. A DV dongle. You can look that up. I'll put a link down in the comments. Plugs into my computer. And it allows me to work D-Star uh, across the internet going into the repeaters from the internet. So I cannot hit a D-Star repeater from my location way out here in the country. So I've got to go in via the internet if I want to talk on D-Star. So I use a DB dongle, plug it into my computer and uh, I'm off and running uh, using this little tool here called uh, DV Tool. Okay, I'm going to open it up. Let's see if it opens up. It may not. No, it's not going to open up because it does not see the DV dongle plugged into the USB port. But anyway, this allows you to control it. It does look like this. It's just a teeny small little box, maybe four inches long and two inches wide and a half an inch deep, and it plugs right into the USB port. And then this software, DB Tool, controls that device and it becomes a radio. All right, the next one is uh, DX View. I'm going to open this up. It takes a second to open up, so I'm going to skip to the next one. As soon as I open this, until it pops up, and then I will uh, uh, go back on it when it does pop up. The next thing is uh, Echo Link. And that's a very neat program. Let me open that up. Here it goes. And it's uh, basically looking around the internet. And there it is. And it found all kind of re Echo Link repe enabled repeaters and links and all kinds of things that you can connect to. And what I do is I have several of the local repeaters that are Echo Link enabled, and some of them are quite far away. I can hit them, but at certain times of the day, believe it or not, when the sun, I think this is the cause of it, the sun lines up as it's setting between my antenna outside and the repeater directly in line during certain times of the year. And at that time, I get a lot of static. <coughs> And when I do, I'll just hit the repeater using Echo Link. I come in via the internet and uh, go out over the regular repeater, and everybody hears me within 40 or 50 miles of that repeater that is tuned to that particular frequency. So I've got the Dallas repeater on there. You can just look around. And see what I've got. North Texas Connection, Corsicana, Lubbock, Texas. Too far for me to hit from here. Several hundred miles. And whatnot. I've saved a few repeaters and different places. Skywarn, North Texas repeater. Uh, just in case I need to get into them uh, via the internet, I can't get in via RF. So that's called Echo Link. Echo Link. Oh, and here is the TX View. It's sitting right here. This is a neat little program. Now we're back over here talking about DX View. There it is right there. And this controls, uh, can control. Uh, Bunch of different types of uh, antenna rotors. Antenna rotors. 
the reason it's free and it's part of the DX Lab series of uh, programs. There's about five of them. They're all free. Uh, I just uh, use one of those modules, which is DX View. You can Google DX Lab and you'll go there and you'll see the various modules and what they do. But anyway, DX View controls my rotors. So let's say I'm hearing somebody in Alaska. I can do that. And if my uh, rotors are connected, uh, these two buttons right here, short path and long path, and here is the, the, the azimuth reading, 325 for the short path and 145 for the long path. Uh, I can just click this and the antenna will turn to Alaska. And then if I want to make a contact in uh, Bahrain, I click right there. And again, I can click one of these buttons and try both paths and maybe make a contact in Bahrain or wherever else. They, they've got all the DX entities here, uh, country-wise. They have them, uh, or entity-wise, they have them all right here. You know, like here's Wales, Wake Island, Virgin Islands, Vietnam, and so forth. So this is real handy uh, to control my rotor when I'm on the radio and I'm hearing a signal and I look up the call sign and that person is in Germany. I can go down to Germany. Let's see, where is it at? Right there, and click it, and turn the beam to Germany. So that's what uh, DX View is used for. Let's shut it down now, and the next one has a strange name, but it's really a neat program if you want to listen to shortwave radio. It's called EIBI View 30, View 30. And let's open it up right here. <clears throat> I am connected to the internet. It just updated its uh, the listing of radio stations shortwave. I've got uh, up in the top here, it says it's got 1,431 stations right now uh, on the list. And, you know, pages and pages. I'm scrolling down the screen right now. We'll scroll a little bit, see. And uh, it gives you the time they're on and the day, days they're on. So this station is on seven days a week uh, from 0700 to 1700 UTC time. And uh, it also, in some cases, gives you the latitude and longitude. It does put a little position if you click one of these. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking for it. I'll find it. Some of them it does. Some of them it doesn't. It just depends if all the data is there. Yep, there we go. There's one. If it's got this data there, it will also plot it uh, on a map. And as you can see, their antenna is not pointed toward the USA. Well, it would be long path. It would go down here and come across here. Uh, you know, when you might be able to hear it from time to time, all right, it's going a long way to get to me, but, uh, it'll draw a little symbol on there, uh, this indicates they have a Yagi antenna, let me see if I can find another one, okay, here's another station right here, and, uh, here's where it is, and in, I guess that's Finland is where it's at, Finland. And it's a omnidirectional antenna. It's got a circle. It's a very handy program if you enjoy shortwave listening. Uh, e I B I View, D I E W, 30, 30, number 30. And again, I'll put links to these. The next two programs is FL Arc and FL Digi. 
When you download FL Digi, you will automatically get FL Arc along with it, the latest version. So whenever you upgrade this, this one will come in with an upgraded version if there is one. So let's talk about Arc first. We'll open that up. And I gotta allow it access. And there we go. And again, it's simply a file transfer program similar to the uh, one I showed you up here, this DRATS, except this is for radio, any other kind of radio. Uh, could be VHF, UHF, could be HF, or whatever. You can send text and or small computer files. Uh, across to another radio that's running FL Arc, uh, and you can communicate in text or small computer files uh, back and forth using this software package. So that's what FL Arc does. No internet, just radio to radio. And of course FL Digi is kind of one of the premier software packages for uh, decoding digital signals, digital signals. So if you go up here to operator mode, you can see all the various kinds of digital signals it will decode, okay? Dozens and dozens of them, including Morse code right here, CW. Uh, if the person sending has a good Fist, hand, good hand, went on the key, on the uh, uh, Morse code key, then it will decode it. If he's a bad sender, you will get gibberish. So uh, it depends on the person sender, sending it, how well it decodes CW. But the rest of these modes, it decodes perfectly as long as you have a proper signal. Uh, and let me just point out PSK31, that's a real popular digital mode, digital mode, PSK31, and along with RIDI, all right, 45, 75, indicates the bandwidth and, and also indicates the speed. This one is faster than this one. Likewise, this one is faster than this one, and so forth. Uh, it also does weather faxes. You know, like if you're on a ship at sea, you, uh, their weather bureau is always transmitting a weather fax uh, map. Uh, and you can get it using FL Digi. So... Many, many digital modes on here that you can decode. I use this software all the time. All the time. I mean, uh, several times a week, at least. <clears throat> all right. So now we're at 3DB, and 3DB, let's see if it'll open. It may not open. May not open. Let's look around, see if it's here anywhere. It's not. It won't open without my radio, so uh, anyway, free DV will, you can plug your radio, usually HF radio, you plug that into the computer and open up DV, uh, free DV, and uh, it converts your analog radio to, digi to a digital signal, uh, less bandwidth, it will travel further than analog, all things being equal, because the signal is narrower band than analog. So uh, at 3K, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, there are people on here from time to time. Uh, if you're an amateur radio operator, you probably come across the signal and didn't know what it was. It's a digital signal. It sounds like uh, noise, basically. Uh, a loud noise. Mm, shh. 
sort of like that. And uh, I know you've come across it if you're an amateur radio operator. It's probably somebody using free DV and talking, but you just can't hear it because you don't have this running on your radio. All right, and then here is Ham Radio Deluxe, and I'm going to open it up just to let you see it. This is the free version, free version. Hang on, it's got to start looking for the radio, even though I know that there's nothing there. There it goes. Yeah, there's nothing there. So here we are. And, you know, it's kind of a complex program. Here's the logbook that I use out of this software. But if I had a radio attached, it would have a screen here with the frequency and all the controls for the radio would be here on the screen and I could operate that radio from this computer screen. Anyway, I'm using the uh, 5.0 X <laughs> version of Ham Radio Deluxe, the last free version. There's a pay to play version 6.0 X. Uh, version that you pay for. I have never gone out there and paid for it. I just use the free version that's out on the internet, the last free version. And of course, here's another rotor controller. Uh, this one is from Ham Radio Deluxe. All right, it's part of this software. And again, I extracted it, extracted the execute file as a shortcut. That way I don't have to open this up uh, and go find it. I can just uh, click it here on the screen. It does the same thing as uh, DX View, except it's a little bit more visual, a little bit more visual. It has a world map on it that opens up full screen. And you can drag your cursor around to any point on Earth, and it will turn the rotor to that point on the map. So uh, it's more, a little more visual than uh, DX View. So I got them both on my machine in case I want to use this one or this one. It makes no difference. All right, the next one is JT65HF. Now. If we look way over here, you're going to see WSJTX. That is the original and uh, latest version uh, from Joe Taylor, the astrophysicist who developed JT65, a digital mode that he was using to bounce radio signals off the moon. Well, he gave away the source code and wrote some software and gave it to the amateur radio community. He is an amateur radio operator and with a call sign. And uh, so he gave this away. A lot of people use WSJTX for JT65. Uh, and let me digress back over here to JT65HF. Why do I have that on the, on the thing? Because I like it better for uh, JT65 than the WSJTX. It's the same software behind the screen, the same decoding algorithm because Joe Taylor gave away the source code. So other hams took the source code and redid the GUI front end. And the reason I like this is it's so easy to use. It, it only does JT65 and all the controls you need are right here. It's very easy to set up. You know, if I want to call CQ, I just push this button and I'll be transmitting that string of text right there as, as soon as it's my time to do it which uh, occurs on the top of every minute. <clears throat> anyway, uh, JT65HF. I prefer this for JT65 rather than, shut this off, 
Then Joe Taylor's original software, which is continually updated, uh, WSJTX. Now, this software is no longer supported, but hey, it works 100%. So who cares if it's not supported anymore? You can still download it. It works 100%. We're going to talk about uh, WSJTX here in a minute. Let's keep going. And we're over here at NetLogger. And if you enjoy uh, getting on some radio nets on HF and on VHF, UHF, I've noticed there's some of those out here, then you need to download NetLogger. NetLogger. Uh, let's select the net. As you can see, here's some nets that you can select, and there's a whole bunch of other ones, you see. Not everybody is on NetLogger, but uh, there's quite a few people using NetLogger to track who is on the net. So let's go ahead and monitor uh, this first one. We'll monitor that. And as you can see, there's three people on that net. And uh, here's their call sign, where they are, their name, and the city. And uh, that way, and also, I almost forgot, there's an instant message window. So you can do text messaging right here. While you're waiting your turn, you can send text messages to the other people, and the other people will see it uh, if they're using NetLogger. Uh, let's get out of here for a second. We'll stop monitoring, and I will select the bigger net and let you see what we got here. Let's see what about this one. Oh, yeah, here's a great big net. Whole bunch of people on it, okay? So if I was running the net with this, you know, I could start with this person, start with this person, and we add on new check-ins down here. And this tells me who is out there waiting to talk. So I can control the net and go right down the list, and everybody gets their turn to talk. So, uh, and then again, if I want to send the text out to everybody, I can just type it in here. Anyway, neat software if you enjoy nets. Uh, I would download this uh, just in case you find out they're actually using net logger to track everybody that's on the net. You'll have it, and all you got to do is open it up. <clears throat> Arbitron is something that I use for satellites and the International Space Station. Uh, it's made by a fella in Poland, is who actually developed it. And here it is. And you can see I've got some sats on here right now, like Cube Bug. And I got Fun Cube. And I got CubeSat. And so forth. Okay. This is the circle indicates the acquisition of signal. So. Let's see if I can get you, uh, let me pick one over here, the International Space Station. I am right here, and it says, it's got a little X there, a little cross, but I don't know if you can see that right here. So if I'm inside this circle, then I can talk to this CubeSat with my radios. I can also see the International Space Station, if it, and it looks like it's going to pass over me later, in just a little while, probably about 35 minutes or so, it'll be over me, because uh, that's its path, and uh, I'll be able to look up and see the International Space Station, because I'll be inside this green ring. Anyway, this is a neat piece of software. Uh, it's a little older piece of software, uh, about 2010 or 2011, but it still works even in Windows 10. <clears throat> and it's called Orbitron, Orbitron. Again, I'll have all the links down there. We're almost done, fellas. Stick with me.
RMS Express. <clears throat> so you got a radio and you're out in the field and you want to send an email. There's no internet. And you want to send an email to John Doe, your buddy in Alaska. All right, and you're in Florida. Well, you can open this program up, and if you can hit one of the repeaters, the Win Link repeaters, W I N L I N K. You can send an email using your radio and it will be transferred over to the internet and go to your buddy in Alaska. So this uh, RMS Express uses the WinLink system to send emails using your radio. All right, let's get into WSJTX, Joe Taylor's uh, software. Let's go up here and look at the modes. You can see all the modes that it does. JT9, JT4, JT65, you know, our combination. And it's looking for a radio. Oh, sorry about that. Let me get it back open. Uh... <clears throat> Anyway, the main reason I'm using it now is it's the only software package out there that has FT8 mode on it to be able to decode it. Let me just move this out of the way. There we go. It's the only one that has... Uh, now it won't let me do that. That's great. Now let's open this up and I'll move this on the other screen. We, we'll get this. We can, we're can. we smarter than the little box. Alright, so uh, go back up here and uh, click the mode. As you can see, it's got FT8 on it. Alright, FT8. Brand new digital mode developed by Joe Taylor. Very fast, 15 second exchanges, one second between exchanges. This software will actually almost handle the entire exchange signal report, uh, QTH, your location, your call sign, his call sign, her call sign, uh, signal reports both ways. And a 73, which means best regards. It'll do all that stuff, automatic pilot. Once you've selected the person you want to talk to, the software uh, cranks up and does all the exchanges that are necessary to make a contact. So it's kind of a really cool digital mode, FT8. And WSJTX does it. WSJTX. Now make sure you put the X in there if you're looking for it, or you'll get the older version. All right, great software that Joe Taylor gave to the amateur radio community. He also gave a software pa package that we call Whisper. Whisper. WSPR. I call it a reverse beacon, a reverse beacon. It'll come up in a second. And what it does, let's see, where's it at? Did it come up? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't see it. I uh, don't see it. Let's try it another way. I want you to see this screen. Uh, let's try it like that. See if it'll open up now. Whisper. What it does is you connect your radio. There it is. Hello. All right. Whisper. What it is is you connect your radio up to it. And you set your radio for very, very low watts. Five watts is the tops. Tops. Four, three, two, or one watt. And it will start sending your call sign and your grid location. 
It'll start transmitting that every few minutes, depending on where you set this little timer. And uh, meanwhile, it is receiving in this window anyone that it hears. So reverse beacon, it's sending a beacon and it's receiving it, other people's beacons. And by looking at this, I usually let it run about 30 minutes. And then I come in here and look at it. And you'll see a whole bunch of call signs and grid locations. And you can kind of tell what propagation is doing on that band at that moment in time. Because if you're receiving someone uh, with 5 watts and you're located in Texas and they're located in British Columbia, well, propagation's pretty good, in, at least in that direction, uh, right now. Probably ought to need, to need to get on the radio see if you can make some contacts. So that's called whisper, whisper, W-S-P-R. All right. We came to the end. I don't know how long this video is, but uh, let me get you back over here. We're going to shut it down in a second. All right, I'm going as fast as I can. I don't know how long this turned out to be. I'll know in a second. But uh, appreciate you all listening in. Hope this helps some of you folks uh, kind of figure out what are ham radio operators using in the way of software. And this will give you a, probably a pretty good start on a list of software packages, free, all of them are free, that you can check out. Anyway, as I usually do, I wish you clear skies of 73, and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See y'all later. Woo! This video's over.